there's the Ukraine war we know about, perhaps all too well. And then there's another war, far less familiar, underpinning this entire conflict. Seth Doan explains. At a special midnight service in Udine in northeast Italy, this priest led his flock of Ukrainian, Russian, and Eastern European immigrants through their usual Orthodox Easter traditions last weekend. But recently, he's also accompanying them on a much less familiar path, sparked by the war in Ukraine. In March, this parish decided to split from its mother church in Moscow, joining instead the Istanbul-based Orthodox Church, whose leader has criticized the war, in stark contrast from the head of the Russian Orthodox Church. By separating from Moscow, Father Volodymyr Melnichuk told us, we are adhering to the Christian vision of the world. There are roughly 100 million Russian Orthodox, the largest church within Orthodox Christianity. Their leader is Patriarch Kirill, who's framed Russia's invasion of Ukraine in holy terms. In a sermon in early March, Kirill railed against the influences of the Western world, its excess consumption and gay pride parades, saying of the Ukraine war, we're talking about human salvation. Patriarch Kirill is supporting the war, in fact. Andrei Sinitsyn, who's from Moscow, agrees with his parish's split. The Patriarch Kirill got too close to the government. How is that as a, as a churchgoer, as someone who a believer? <laughs> no, it's, it's unacceptable. The church should be independent. I believe that the church is the main supplier of the ideology, Putin's ideology. Father Cyril Overun was ordained by Kirill and was his theological advisor until 2012. This war has a simple formula. War equals to uh, guns plus ideas. And the guns are, uh, of course, supplied by the Kremlin, and the ideas come from the church. And Father Cyril believes Putin sees this war as a sacred operation. A mission from God to purge the world from, you know, impurity of the Western ideas and Western values. You're saying that the church is, has created the ideological underpinning for the war. Well, actually, when I was uh, working in the Moscow Patriarchate, I was witnessing how this ideology was emerging, and I protested uh, against that. In Soviet times, priests were pushed to keep the spy service informed, and it's widely believed that Kirill was in the KGB. But Father Cyril believes Kirill was never enthusiastic about it, which created friction with Putin. That's why we are talking about the marriage of convenience and not, not marriage by love. What do you mean it's a marriage of convenience, not of love? They have to tolerate each other because they use the skills the charisma and possibilities, resources of each other, each one for his own end. Those resources are vast, says another former insider, Sergei Chapnin, who also worked for Kirill. There are uh, rough estimations uh, that he's uh, definitely a, a billionaire, and in fact, he is one of the Putin's oligarchs. Sorry to you, say wait, that. Wait, you're calling the patriarch an oligarch? Yeah, he has financial interest in sort of his cooperation uh, with the state, just like other oligarchs. Chapnin sees Russia's church as a state propaganda machine, spreading Putin's message as the defender of conservative values against a morally corrupt West. Chapnin also thinks the expansionist ambitions of Kirill even exceed those of Putin. The main motivation for Patriot Kirill is actually power, uh, and influence, but because of the war, he actually loses it. Before the war, Ukraine had many Orthodox churches loyal to Moscow. Now hundreds of Ukrainian parishes have broken away in protest, something that's not so easy to do in Russia. Still, this priest from a parish outside Moscow says he felt compelled to speak out. The responsibility of what is happening now lays on all of us, Father Gyoan Bordin told us, everyone who approved it or stayed silent. But when he spoke in a sermon of what he called this fratricidal conflict, he was questioned by Russian police, fined and warned of a criminal proceeding. You're seeing people in Russia leave the church because of this? 
It's not a visible process, they do not leave in groups, he told us, but without a doubt, it's happening. And just as this church in Udine, Italy illustrates, as Putin tries to alter political borders, the region's religious map is also changing.